is 300 horsepower through a 55 millimeter exhaust too much of a restriction I wanted to know so I made my own exhaust back pressure tester using the boost gauge that was already in the car to find out if it was a restriction and if so how much so a bit of background the uh, project uh, that we've got is using the VAG 1.8 turbo 20 valve motor it's running around 300 brake I swapped off I swapped the exhaust that was on it which was a 70 millimeter and I swapped out that exhaust for a 55 millimeter basically the stock exhaust because I wanted to make it quite a bit quieter than what it was so I could feel that there was a power loss this is how I made the tester the downpipe on the car already had an EGD, EGT sensor in it so I tapped my pressure sensor into that so what I've got here this is the photo of the little of the setup so what we've got here is a female thread which threads onto the end of the EGT bung that's in the downpipe then we've got a aluminium pipe which goes inside the threaded portion of this fitting and then to keep these two parts together to stop them from blowing apart I've put a uh, silicon hose with uh, secured with the jubilee clips on each end now the exhaust the silicon hose is rated to probably around 170 celsius so my thinking here with the aluminium pipe aluminium is a good conductor plus the exhaust gas is not directly contacting the silicon because this is coming through it to about here I was thinking that the uh, aluminium is going to conduct away the heat and the, the silicon is not going to get too hot and at least I'm not going to be running around with it permanently I just wanted for it to be able to be on there without melting for like 5-10 minutes this video is based on an article on uh, strikeengine.com there's a link to the article in the video description if you want to read what I'm uh, talking about here this is the other end so we've got the aluminium pipe this is probably around I want to say 30 centimeters long this goes into a silicon hose which goes into a reducer which goes into a silicon hose which goes directly into the boost pressure sensor that's mounted in the engine bay and that was it that's all I did if you've got a lambda sensor then you just need to change you just need to find a suitable fitting that will screw on to your screw on or screw into your um, lambda sensor bung on the exhaust but bear in mind where you're measuring the exhaust gas pressure you're measuring the, the restriction downstream not upstream so if you say put it on the lambda sensor that's after the cat and you read no pressure increase there that doesn't mean there isn't a pressure restriction further forward in the exhaust system if, you, if that makes sense this is how I've attached it to the EGT bung so this is the, the whole setup in action like I said I'm not going to be using this all the time this was just to be able to work for five or ten minutes and this is the connection where it goes into the uh, boost sensor that's uh, mounted in the engine bay this cable then goes to the boost gauge that's in the car on the A pillar so did it work all in all it worked a treat I drove the car for around five minutes with this setup which was plenty to get the readings I needed basically full gas full open throttle through the RPM range and then looking at the boost gauge to see what happened I didn't notice any melting this this pipe was it was quite warm on this end but by the time it got here it was sort of easily touchable so I think it was doing its job transferring heat away from the silicon hose and I didn't notice any uh, issues with the uh, silicon getting uh, too hot in summary I don't see any issue using a setup like this um, basically the aluminium pipe did its job so what were the results of this test uh, up until around 3000 rpm with a 7 maybe getting up to 15 psi of boost the back pressure was close to zero maybe there was sort of 0.1 of a bar 0.2 of a bar but after this point the uh, the pressure sort of ramped up quite quickly and then by 4000 rpm it the the gauge was reading like 0.8 bar 0.9 bar and at that point i lifted off immediately so the engine red lines at 6500 rpm so for sure the 55 millimeter exhaust is a huge restriction and on the evidence from this test i would say the limit of the stock exhaust on the 1.8 turbo engines like that's using the golf gti mark 4 leo mark 1 a3 mark 1 and the octavia rs mark 1 i'd say that exhaust the 55 millimeter is probably at its limit at around 200 
maybe 220 horsepower. I mean, there has I've read forum posts where people have said it's good 300. No, absolutely, in my opinion, absolutely not. The the power was noticeably stopped increasing as the back pressure increased, I suppose, as you would expect. And like I said, before I put it on there, I could feel that the um, it, it had definitely lost a lot of um, a lot of life at the top end of the rpm range before it was a bit unhinged you know going from 4000 to 6500 but you know that magic had gone there so for the purpose of this test the diy exhaust pipe pressure sensor worked a treat if you want something permanently mounted then i would recommend having sort of all metal connections if you can down on the downpipe here this silicon was just something quick and easy that i could uh, bolt up but, but i think if you can get this all metal that would be the way to go so guys that's the video that's how i made a diy exhaust pass exhaust back pressure sensor if you're wondering how um how to make one what you needed to do hopefully this gives you some some sort of guidance as to um what's required as always if you enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and i'll see you again in the next video